Alright, so good to be back. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sadson. In today's tutorial, we're going to implement the drag and drop feature. So I have items in the left container and I can move them to the right container. So I can just grab and hold. I'm using my mouse. I can drop them here. So you can see this is what we're trying to implement. The drag and drop feature in web browsers. I'm going to be using the documentation, obviously. So I used this API right here, which is the HTML drag and drop API. These are two interfaces. There's a drag and a drop interface which enable applications to use drag and drop features in browsers. We can customize what we call draggable elements that we can be able to move. We can also customize those elements that are droppable. That is a valid drop target. That's what we call a, a droppable. For us to be able to build that, we need HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so I'm going to jump right into my text editor. I have my structure, which is the HTML that we're going to be using. Inside the body, we have a container. In that container, we have two sections, the left and the right. Inside our left section, we have items item one to five they are inside the left section if i hover over an element and i try to drag it it's draggable this is possible because of this attribute right here which is draggable true you have to pass this attribute on your element that you intend to drag uh, by the way i'm going to leave a link to the github, GitHub repo for this source code css is quite straightforward i had to do a browser reset right here by the way i'm nesting my rules, my CSS rules right here is possible with the latest versions of CSS. You can just look at the code and, and try and figure out what's happening. Our focus is not on HTML and CSS. That's why I'm not spending a lot of time on CSS and HTML. So I had to link my CSS up here. You can see it's linked right here. I had to link my JavaScript down here, which is the main.js. And so right now, let's get into our JavaScript file and start working on that functionality. For us to be able to do that, we need to select our draggable and droppable elements first. So I'm going to say const items right here of course our, our draggable elements are these ones so we need to select them in the javascript and do something with these elements right here so to select those we can say document dot query select all um the reason why i'm using query select all because this is a list of elements you can see it's not one it's five elements so we need to use that so i'm going to target their specific class which is just dot item and if you check this out you see this is their class so that's why I, I had to apply a class name to each one of these elements uh, so that we can um, target them in, in our javascript okay so i can log this to the console to see whether i'm getting those items and if i save i'm going to open the to inspect this and then check out you can see we have our node list right here so which means we're getting our elements and so we're good we have draggable elements right here and our droppable elements are going to be two it's this section left section and the right section so we're going to make these two sections droppable targets and so for us to select them uh, we're also going to use their class names uh, so i'm going to start with the left one uh, by the way these um, arbitrary names you can name this whatever you want uh, there's a left class here and a right class so that's what i'm going to use so uh, left i'm going to use again document the query select at this time is not a list of elements it's just one element so i'll use query selector and it has a class of left i'm sure that one and we're going to do the same for the right element is document dot query selector and this one has got a right class so we have selected our droppable and draggable elements the next thing we need to do is we need to listen for events of course and and these are actions performed by the user the first one is the drag start event this affects the draggable items if i try to drag this this is where we're going to listen for the drag start so we need to identify which element is being dragged by the user so for us to access in the individual items we need to use a for each so I'm going to say items for each and we're going to do something on each item. And so we're going to say item dot add an event listener. The event that we're listening for is called a drag start. By the way, I'm not making this up, this drag start. It's in the documentation. So you can just go to the documentation and see here, drag start right here. The user starts dragging an item. So you're targeting each item and check whether it's being dragged or not. So we're going to fire a callback right here, which is going to take an, an event 
object e for the event object we need to identify the uh, element which is being dragged using its id so we have ids right here which are unique so how do we get hold of that element id we have an interface right here which we can use so i'm going to use this data transfer interface so the data transfer object is used to hold any data transferred between contexts so such as drag and drop operation yeah so that's one of the contexts where i can use this data transfer object so that's the one that i'm going to use so to use that i access it via this event object that we passed here so i can say dot data transfer uh, by the way you can see the camel casing here and on that object there is a method called set data Okay, so we're trying to set our data inside this data transfer object so that we can use it later on. Okay, so this set data takes in two arguments. It takes the format string and the actual data that you want to set in the data transfer object. So the format string, uh, as we can see, we're trying to get hold of the ID. So this ID is just plain text. So we can say here is going to be text txt, text for slash plain. And the second argument is going to be the actual data, which we can access via e.target uh, .id, which is the identity of uh, this right here. We are accessing this attribute here. And so that's what we are getting hold. And we are setting it in this data transfer object, and we're going to use it later on in our application. After we get the ID of the element that we're trying to drag, the next event that we're going to listen to is the drag over event, right? This is going to target the droppable element. The droppable element is just a valid drop target. And so in our application, our valid drop targets are going to be these two containers, the left and the right container. Outside of that, that that's going to be an invalid drop target. So for us to do that, we need to select these two elements right here left and right so for us to select these two i'm going to create uh, a container to hold these two so i'm going to call it section and it's going to be an array which is going to hold the left section and the right section by the way i'm getting these variable left and right from these two variables up here so we have that okay. we can say sections dot for each so for each section section dot add an event listener and this event listener is going to listen to a drag over uh, by the way i'm also not making this up it's in the documentation you can go and check it out right here drag over a dragged item is being dragged over a valid drop point and so uh, we can listen for that and then we can fire this callback function which is going to take an, the event and do something so what do we uh, intend to happen let's say somebody here drags this item over the right section or the left section the default behavior if i grab this over and i try and drag it to this right section you can see it's not allowed there is a prohibited sign on that similar with the outside so we need to make this a droppable area so how do we do that we just prevent the default and so here we can say e dot prevent default so if i'm to save that and check this out now if i drag this to this now it's no longer giving me that prohibited sign right it's showing me that it's possible to drag elements over here but outside of course now i'm getting that but inside these two elements it's possible to, to drop elements here so that's what we have to do right here right and then last uh, but not least we have to listen to the drop event what should happen if i drop an element inside these valid drop targets this right is a valid drop target the left is also a valid drop target this should be inside this for each right here we can say section dot add an event listener the event that we're listening for is the drop event again i'm not making this up you can check this is in the documentation right here the drop an item is dropped on a valid drop target so um we're going to fire a callback function right here, and here which is going to take an e again which is the event object and so the browser might have its own default behavior so we need to prevent that default behavior first we need to extract the data that we set in this data transfer. So to extract that, I'm going to store that in, in a variable. You can name this variable whatever you want, but I'm going to call it ID. And so we're going to say e dot data transfer. And then dot this time we're getting the data. So it has a get data method. Um, up here it was set data, but now we're getting the data. And so it takes the format of the data that you set up here. So it's text 
4 slash plane just like that and now we have this id so uh, we can check it out uh, by logging into the console and see whether it's working so let's let's see whether we're getting the ids of these elements that we're trying to drag and drop check out this console right here drag item 5 drop it you can see now it's giving me that id item 4 let me try that drop it you can see i'm getting item 4 item 3 drop it item 3 item 2 drop it item 2 item 1 drop it you can see i'm getting item 1 so these are coming from the ids that we specified here so what is left for us to do is to specify the action what we intend to do with that element we store that in a in a variable called alum but yeah, of course you can name this whatever you want uh, i'm going to use document dot get elements by id uh, since we are accessing the id right here and we can grab that element and once we grab that element we can then append it to the container if we drop it in that container uh, that's what we need to do so we can say uh, section dot append a child and that child is going to be the element and with this done we are done okay so if i save this and go back and try and move this drop here you can see now these elements are moving from the left container to the right and vice versa Okay, so basically this is how you implement this and I recommend that you go through the documentation. It's quite handy if you read through the documentation. Don't try to consume everything at once, just go step by step. Try to understand one step at a time and then obviously by the time you finish you'll be in a better position. Alright, so I want to thank you for your time. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Cheers.